And then after that, I mean, what do you what do you do? After quarantine ends, do you just leave? No, you've invested so much into my little into my little uh, borough. I'm not going anywhere. Hello and welcome. My name's Jay Yee, and with me today is my good old friend Alexander Gonzalez. Hello, hello, hello. And please remember that we are not game devs. How are you doing today, Alex? I'm doing pretty good. Um, excuse my voice if it sounds different. I've actually been trying to do voice training, and because of that, I wore out my voice. It doesn't sound too bad right now, though. But those are not How about you? the vocal cords we were talking about today. I'm doing all right. Uh, today, we are creating <laughs> something new. Every week, We're Not Game Devs will create a new exciting video game idea that we have always wanted to play, but do not have any knowledge or know-how to create the wonderful experience that are video games. Today is my turn to present We Are Not Game Devs 137 IP. Let's begin with this basic concept. What do you know? Can I, what, what's up? So it's funny. I, I'm just going to put this little thing in. Because we have to remember so often, someone was like, man, uh, I was talking to somebody and they were, and she said, man, I should listen to your podcast. I was like, no pressure. And she's like, what episode are you on? And without missing a beat, I was like 137 tomorrow. <laughs> like it's just pre-programmed in yeah. my brain. I mean, but anyway, what, what's your idea? There, there was a time in, in history where we just forgot. We just did not All the know. time. Yeah. I mean, it took us Check a, out episodes 50 through like 75. Yeah. 100 episodes to get that right. Because after a certain number, we're like, I don't know. It's been a lot. And then now we're like, we forgot too many times. We have to remember this shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my game, what do you know about the games I come up with? I come up with so very specific. You types. come up with like pirate flying RPGs in a world unknown because they're bouncing through clouds oh as God. two planets That's collide. Ariel, you're bringing back like episode three. <laughs> as two planets collide and then they see a parallel self in them and they're spawning different weapons and then maybe some Kingdom Hearts shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. What do we got? We've got a collaborative PvE Battle Royale meets Tower Defense. Ooh. Okay, so immediately when you said collaborative PvE, I thought about like a bunch of people playing a game, killing Godzilla. And then you said Battle Royale, and I was like, okay, the two sides have to fight each other to kill Godzilla. And then you said Tower Defense, and I'm like, so they're in towers as Godzilla is trying to kill them? <laughs> See, that's kind of the point. Like, okay, so this is where I kind of think this is going to go. It's going to kind of be more of like a how long can you survive type of game, I guess. But you're working as as like a lobby or as a community, and maybe we can add some some sort of competitive aspect. Maybe it's like teams of four or teams of eight or teams of 16 or whatever it is. Like you, we maybe we could scale the different – total party members but what i imagine or it's just open for everybody all at once but what i imagine you you log in and in very battle royale-esque style you're in like a either flying boat or a helicopter or whatever and then you're flying across the map and then you can drop down deploy pick your point of nah nah uh, nah we're, we're not like everybody else <laughs> we're gonna be in a submarine and then when they're ready we're gonna shoot them out like torpedoes, and then they're going to just fly in. They're going to fly in on a flying suit. Sure. I mean, we'd have to match that with the story somehow, but I guess we could do that. But anyway, wh the what you do... The creature also comes from the deep. You 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 choose an area on this pretty decent-sized open map. I would say it's about Apex Legends size. I wouldn't say it's Call of Duty Warzone size because that's just gigantic. But it, it's a decently-sized map, and then you... you fly up, I guess, out of a torpedo and down into this map and you choose where you want to land. When you land there, uh, Battle Royale asks, there's weapons everywhere, armor everywhere, maybe perks and stuff like that. But there is obviously going to be a... In in each major area, like in, in Battle Royales, there's like named areas. In each named area, there is a... I'm assuming some kind of fort or like a dungeon, uh, uh, some sort of obvious So some landmark. sort of structure in which you can barricade yes. yourself. Yes, it doesn't even have to be a structure. It could be an open now, farm field or something like that. 
I like what you're saying about barricade because I'm thinking we can go different ways. Of course, everyone thinks of the castle. But what if I liked your idea about the dungeon where they have to go down to find you and then in there, maybe there's cages, maybe there's chains, maybe there's traps. It's, it's, it would be different than a castle which would have advantageous ways of attack. Exactly. Do you kind of get what yeah. I'm saying? And or maybe there's just different ways of tower defense? Right. And I think that there's going to be all sorts of these things in one whole map. It's like in other Battle Royale games, let's take Apex Legends, since that's the one I know the most. One side of the map, it could be like a lava hellscape. And on the other side, it's a snowy mountain. You know, like there's yeah. variety in and, one whole map. And you know, if we're doing tower defense, I'm going to say defense and defense off and on let's have a swamp in there yeah. like something where you know it reduces the speed of the characters the enemies but if you get in there pretty good maybe you can knock people out right. i don't know um i like that yeah we'll have all sorts of different environments and of course new maps will come in every like three seasons or whatever just like any other battle royale that being said the main gameplay is you get to this landmark with your squad you barricade yourself into this thing and you try to defend it as much as possible. Maybe the longer you stay in, you get points. Maybe it's that plus how many kills of whatever enemy. In my head, it's zombies, but it could be anything. Godzilla could be one like major event, you know, like where one giant creature starts yes, attacking please. one structure, you know? I, I've never, I don't know how much I've talked about how, like, how much I like kaijus. Oh, I mean Gundams it, oh. and all that stuff. I'm I'm sure we're aware. <laughs> okay, but if there's a kaiju that can come out of the water and do a really cool roar and just start messing stuff up, just get in there and just start throwing things, I would like that very much. Yeah. How about how about we do it this way where again, pulling another battle royale out of my ass. Uh, in Apex Legends, there's random supply drops, relo relocators or whatever, fucking respawn beacons that spawn randomly throughout the map. What we could do for this is there will be like um, sector D5 warning, giant creature approaching or whatever. And then you could go there and try to take this guy on. Yo, what if, what if, hear me out, because this, this might change things a little bit. What if we make the late game a little bit different where once things start dropping, then maybe stuff will drop where there will be a, a little vehicle you can get in and then you can start shooting the kaiju or like soaring over different parts. Or maybe someone else has not a mech, for instance, but like a suit. Imagine like how Iron Man would wear a suit and then they could also, and that would be another way of flying where maybe it's not as much attack as that vehicle, but it's also more maneuverable and different stuff in the late game where it suits up. Maybe there's something that you can upgrade your base and then all of a sudden your base gets a certain characteristic. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Magic field. Maybe it could be there's incoming giant creature warnings and also special drops and, and that'll be right. a vehicle drop or a, Armored suit drop. And now that I buttered you up, if they're squads, all right, if they're squads, uh -huh. could we do it where if ever if there's three people or four people who each get a mech upgrade, like a little suit or something, that they can combine that into one bit into one medium mech just real quick and just only for a couple seconds, like maybe 30 seconds. Okay. Let's talk about and then they, squad yeah. sizes for a moment. Um I'm thinking four. I'm thinking four. And this is how I see it. There's squads of four. We'll say 80 total player on one map at one given time. That gives 20 other teams. Now, I would say that the goal is to kill as much of whatever and also hold as many fortresses for as long as possible. That being said... There can be, I would say, some collaborative effort in, let's say, taking down a giant boss. However, you don't have to work together and um, just try to take them out on separately, or you can try to work together. And I was thinking about this. There is going to be a winner, and the winner is going to be the survivor, of course. However, what if we also reward in-game points for doing things that we kind of already expect them to do. So if you hold down a fort, 
you're getting end game points for how long you have the fort. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're attacking the beast, you're getting points for doing more damage to the beast. Let's say you actually make the beast fall. If your squad had the majority of damage in that, you're going to get the majority of the points from that. Yeah. If you take down an enemy's base and establish your own, you're going to get points for that. If you damage an enemy's base, and let's say maybe there'll be three stages of damage, you'll get bonus points for that. That way, it, it you know, even if you're not in the best place of the game, you, maybe you don't want to leave. You don't know what's going to happen. You can get points and make it up. Now, what are these points for? Do you think we should use them to trade in for items? Or do you think this should be points that they take with them at the end of the match? And maybe they can buy cosmetics yeah. and stuff. And, the, and the way make that character unique. The way that I see it working, again, I'm stealing from a lot of battle royale games, but we'll get all that stuff. So you, you get you get points for defending, you get points for kills, you get points for taking on bigger the big monsters that drop you get points for maybe even points for collaborating with other enemy squads uh you get points for taking over other players forts but um i did before i get to this second measure uh second thought i had let me finish this one um all these points at the end of the battle of course are all going to get accumulated and give you the winner whoever had the most points and then of course we'll do it overwatch style where we'll Give small shout outs. This team did the most damage to Kaijus. This team did the most fort defense. This team did. The, and so we'll give shout outs to everyone at the end screen. Um, because I don't see squads just getting completely eliminated. I would say it's kind of like if you die, maybe there's uh, there's a way to get back or there's like a respawn cooldown to get back or whatever something it will be easy to get back it's not like when you're dead you have to wait to get respawned or you have to face off in the gulag or whatever you know what i mean there, i'm assuming it, there's like you have to spend points somewhere to revive so and maybe there's a revive center spread throughout or something like that um i <laughs> when you said gulag i was thinking about the different ways we could kind of implement a gulag i know we're not right but i was just thinking about like you're getting you're getting dragged and your character's naked and you're put on a table and there's aliens and they're and they're like about to probe you and then you have to fight your way out. But no, 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 we're not doing any of that. But I do think, however, if you can indulge me one more time, it would be cool if maybe on another map, instead of there being a kaiju coming out, maybe there's asteroids that fall that do damage. And then in late game, it's actually an alien race that comes in so that you'll see them in the sky. And then you have to defend and they're coming down from above instead of coming up from below like a kaiju would. Oh, I'm down for that. Like maybe it's more like an alien invasion type of deal for that exactly. particular. I don't so even think it would be a it... map. Maybe what we could do is different themed events. And then after that theme event's over, they become a random occurrence in the okay. map. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But continuing on the point system, what I imagine is once you get points, let's say you earned a million points in one mm-hmm. match, that million points after the match will translate to, let's say, 10,000 experience points or whatever. And that exp- those experience points will go towards, uh, quote unquote, battle pass. Um, of course, there'll be a free one and then a paid one, a premium battle pass. And as you build that up, you'll get more cosmetic rewards and stuff like that. And, and there'll be a store I'm- and all that stuff. And I'm guessing, I know I'm skipping a little ahead here, but we're doing, and the reason I'm saying this is I'm going to check in with you because I play zero battle royales mm-hmm. and you play more battle royale than I do. The premium battle pass will be there because we're probably most likely going to make this game free. Yes, most likely okay. going to be free. And then All right, um, just, just making sure the the free battle pass will give you some rewards, but if you pay like $20 or whatever, or an in-game credit yeah. that you can earn, but slowly uh, you could buy the premium battle pass. And then, so, ah, man, I'm, I'm having all kinds of ideas for this. Cause I've, we've, there's never been a battle royale. Fortnite gets zany. And that's where I'm kind of getting with it, where you can do whatever you want with these universes, especially mm-hmm. if it's tower defense, all yeah. of a sudden, like you can throw a lot of enemies in. Right. I'm kind of liking this. Um, the second point I did want to make about this whole game is Fort abandonment. Um, I will say you can definitely just keep one fort 
the entire game and you'll get points for just keeping less forts but i think you'll also get points for taking over multiple forts and the reason why this will do is i think taking just keeping one fort you'll get a lot of points because it's, i think it'll be extremely hard to do the longer you're in a fort i think the stronger enemies will start to arise and maybe the longer you keep a fort that's where major monsters will start spawning is near your fort i'm assuming that's just how the uh, uh coding would work for this game and because of that, what I want there to be for every fort, I'm saying fort, but it could be whatever. It doesn't have to be a fort or a castle or whatever. It could it, be whatever. It, it's it is. an enclosure, an encampment, like yeah, we said. There exactly. could be a dungeon. There could be um, different, like a base in the swamp. Yeah. Um, at a certain point, there's going to be a mechanic called fort overrun. Is just the name I have for the top of my head. And what fort overrun mean is. Your fort has been completely taken over by these monsters. You failed to keep the fort. And that's not a bad thing, because I think this is going to happen to the majority of players, even if you're very good. And Most players. I mean, there's only going to be a couple winners. Right. But I just mean, like, once this game's been out for, like, a year, people have are oh. really good at this game. They're still going to get their fort overrun, unless they're... Yeah they get the perfect drops and they're just on fire that game. And the reason why I want this fort overrun thing is in each fort, uh, there's one or two escape routes and you have to use these escape routes to get out of the, an overrun fort. And at the end of the match, depending on how many forts you're able to conquer and how long you were able to conquer them, you'll get points accumulated for all those forts. Um, and then an added thing that you could do if you're another team player and you happen upon an already overrun fort, you could take it back over and then maybe that will give you some points for taking over a overrun fort or a fort that belonged to another player group. You'll get some bonus points for doing that. Um, now, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Can these, when you hit, like, let's say basically you're hitting the panic button. Now, these secret passages, if a player knows about them or stumbles upon them, another squad, can they, in theory, use these secret passages to kind of attack you secretly? Mm. Um, right? Yeah, I think in theory you can use a escape route to infiltrate a fort. But it's I guess risky because the thing is, I mean, if the player, if the players who are holding the fort know about it, they'll always be checking. But I think it would add an interesting element where other players would uh, get into it as well. Yeah. Let me. Dying. All right, while Alex goes and charges his phone, maybe what we could do to just... And that was easy. No, I was just talking about my computer. Oh, okay. Uh, We're back. But just to prevent that, maybe we can make it so it, it isn't possible to use a escape route to infiltrate. And what it is, is when your fort gets overrun, you get the fort overrun message on your screen, uh, maybe that's the only time where forts will open up their escape paths. And then um, once the fort is overrun, it closes it. You know what I mean? So, like, there are only paths that open up when fort is overrun. And then it'll oh, close that's it fine after. then, too. Because yeah. I can just imagine some players outside being like, look at all those big monsters. Them rubbing their hands together. Oh, no. They're not going to make it out of there alive. Here, no, no, no. Come over here. Come over here. You see that little gate by the hill right there by the beach? They're going to be right there. We're going to jump them, get all their gear. And then we'll take over that castle. Yeah. And I think you saying that, I think um, what can happen is as another team, if you see a fort getting overrun, you could choose to help them. Or maybe you'll choose to wait by the exit and just kill them when they leave. And, <laughs> and then the people inside the fort are like, men, we either stand and fight or die to our enemies. <laughs> Let us make our ancestors proud this day. Yeah, I guess at that point I would just stand and fight. Yeah. See, so now it's make it's kind of interesting. Do you do you die to the monsters? Do you do you try to escape and then wait for pe for people who have been waiting for your downfall to capitalize? What's going to happen? Yeah, and I would say the incentive of helping is you'll either get more points at the end, or maybe you'll get a special perk for helping someone else. You'll get a special item, maybe. Um, also, maybe like taking over a fort that's already overrun, uh, you'll get maybe less points for doing it, but you'll get more points for killing all the overrun creatures that are already infected the fort. 
Um, maybe you'll get better loot or just better fortifications and stuff like that because the other team had to leave some of their stuff there that they've built up. Um, but yeah, there, there'll be incentives to do everything, like either help, go against, uh, collaboratively do something and all that stuff. Now, so we're using standard weapons, I'm guessing. Modern war weapons, correct? So, I mean, it's going to branch off, and I think it's going to get a little zany when you upgrade. But in the beginning, pistols, shotguns, submachine guns, rifles, automatic rifles, sniper rifles, heavy machine guns, those are all to be expected? I think so, but I, I, for some reason in my head, this takes place in a not-too-distant future. So these guns can be kind of like more like energy weapons, like blasters and stuff like that. Uh, and to combat these giant creatures that are starting to evade or to protect from an alien invasion and stuff like that, we've upgraded our tech in order to combat these new creatures that we have to go against. Um, so I could imagine these are like a little bit more futuristic weapons than normal. Um, another thing I imagine is obviously we have these mechs you talked about that could link together. Um, and you can link together with an, an, with another team's person if they happen to get that mech as well. Uh, you know what I mean? Like you uh, in the Iron Man mech and another team has one dude in Iron Man mech. I'm assuming you can meet up and link up together as well. Um, another assumption I would have Dope. in this game Dope. is that uh shoot I lost my train of thought all right so we know we know the kind of guns we know it's in the not too distant future oh we know that it's going to be squads of four yeah. all right story wise i would say maybe what happened was the maps that we introduced in this game so every time we'll introduce a new map we will say they're big cities so the first map is like new york but it has kind of broken off and is surrounded by water. And then we'll have like majority water monsters come and attack and we'll have like, you know what I mean? And the next map yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. introduce is like Los Angeles or Tokyo, of course, or like Seoul and stuff like that. Like major cities after this crazy cast catastrophic event happened on earth. And all of a sudden these giant monsters, aliens, uh, creatures from the deep, what if we said that the technology from the not too far future happened to resonate and hit a vibration that woke these creatures up in the deep and also attracted creatures from beyond our world? Sure, like they maybe, they maybe found like we like hit a, a technology we hit a technological rev like we hit a technological bar that we shattered a ceiling where now there's other creatures where maybe there's a law in place where they're like, no, humans are fair game now. They've entered into the age of like whatever. Yeah. Whatever age that would be. Galactic age. Yeah. And with that brings maybe what it is. Okay. This is Kai what it juice. is. It would be okay. like Transformers-esque where the spark, the Allspark has fallen onto Earth. We found the Allspark. Of course, it's not the Allspark, but it's a new form. It's, it's a tech. It's a technology that elevates ours. Yeah, it's a new form way. of energy. It's an alien energy source that we don't fully understand. And when we use it and unlock it, it introduces maybe a, a uh, like a, something happens to the creatures in Earth. Maybe it either awakens or evolves creatures that already exist on Earth to a astronomical like a crazy amount of size and aggression and stuff like that. And that explains like creatures from the deep. Let, let's say a Kraken is in this game and you have to go fight a Kraken off the coast. Right. And that came from like the vibration that set off when we started working with alien technology. And then in another DLC, when we introduce a new map, that's when the aliens come and do stuff. That's when maybe giant alien creatures also come and they and take over the land. And that's when stuff. you get the ancient beings and the beasts coming out too, out of the water, because we haven't explored our Earth's oceans. Exactly. So there's a, there's some other people coming out of there. Yeah. I like it, I like it. And I, I, I am taking, obviously, very fantastical. I don't think this is an Earth that exists here. This is definitely like a... No. It, we're just... Uh, we're basically enforcing what we know about reality to create a new one exactly. and there just happens to be things that will be identical. it's a it's a fantastical take on an 
semi-futuristic Earth. Yes. All right. Well, what kind of music are we listening to in this not so... It's going to be all over the place, I think. Um, For some reason, I'm thinking some... Because it's the future, I'm thinking about a little bit of EDM music, but not like where it hits you over the head. Maybe a little trancey, you know, as you're getting started. Uh, but that's me. Did you have anything else in mind? See, I, I thought it would be more just classic video gamey music. Like I'm thinking more towards like the Overwatch side of things, where Overwatch is also in a futuristic setting. We just don't know because it is they do it so orchest- well. So, so that's more orchestral music yeah. where I don't mind that, where we have an orchestra, so there's themes. Yeah, I just so think maybe it'd you be... want a beast. And oh man, could you imagine when a kaiju enters the scene and the music changes and it's just like bum 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 and the, like horn starts swelling and then like you just hear like a beast roar in the in the, the background you're like okay here we go yeah i definitely That'll think it's gonna be more like, like that where it's we're gonna have like an orchestraic theme and then we'll have themes for each monster we introduce and then of course like a map theme music and stuff like that where it's like yeah I love that. So yeah, when we reveal this game or maybe we reveal DLC, we'll have our own orchestra playing live. I love when they do that. Yeah. You know, and then they have them playing towards like uh to live music. Okay. Quick side note on that. I saw that they did this live orchestra version where they did all the music live for the Star Wars movies. That's just that's awesome. That's on another level. That's awesome. Anyway. Amazing. Pricing, free to play. Probably a premium battle yeah. pass, and then like yeah, we discussed this earlier. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we got it. All right, Alex. Well, it's time to start your timer because it's time to name this game. All right, and go. When the creatures attack. All right, when the creatures attack at fifty-four, not at ten seconds. <laughs> cool. I did not think you would be cool with that title. You know, we've been struggling in the last couple of weeks, and you know, it's not maybe about the title of the game, but about the game itself. So let me tell you about When the Creatures Attack. This is a Battle Royale tower defense game where you are playing in a squad with multiple other people on a diverse map. And what you aim to do is to take over a fort. And what we mean by a fort is a defensible location because there is going to be an attack. And this attack is going to be by, you guessed it, creatures. So as you defend your fort, your fort will become more defensible. You can upgrade it. You will get weapons. You can get bonuses for being out in the field. And the creatures will come and they will get stronger. And you have to do what you can to defend when the creatures attack. Real quick, these creatures, quote unquote, like the overarching small trash mobs that you fight maybe they're like a energy source creature that just comes into being because you're using this energy i think they could be all kinds of stuff let's say before the kai yeah before the kaiju comes out we can make it where they're crab creatures and mermen crawling out of the surf and then like attacking so you think the creatures will have aliens area specific not area specific, uh, maybe a little bit in the sense, but they're all around the same strength or they all do something. Right. Around the like same they're strength. trash mobs for sure. And yeah, there's like exactly. elites amongst them, um, like the heavier set dudes with the shotgun or like the fast, quick yeah. dudes that are like super. And I would agile. want the elites, exactly. And I'd want the elites to be theme specific for the map. Okay. Because then that's when maybe, for instance, with the aliens, you'll have alien scouts. Who will now be uh, maybe directing Larva. Okay. So maybe for the very first map, it will have to be the alien evasion one. And then that's where we'll get these trash mobs from. And they're just the general trash mobs. And then from yeah, that, um, these aliens start using the earth to breed their own giant monsters to fight against us type of thing. What I kind of like about that with the alien trash mobs too is if someone gets taken down by trash mobs and they can't get revived... A larva will spawn from them. Mm. It'll just blow up, and then there'll be another trash mob. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's something I did want to touch on before we close this out. Uh, dying and respawning. Uh, TPKs, so total party kills, uh, the way that we go about that, I think, is you just get to get maybe 
this energy source just gives the players a random way to reincarnate their bodies and form it from the energy. Let's just say that's what happens. And then you get to just torpedo out after like a cool down or something like that and start fresh. And I don't know exactly what we'll do for TPKs, but something like that. Like I said, I don't want this to be the type of battle royale where I want this to be a type of battle royale where every single, all 80 players on this map, if they choose to, they can leave if they want. Um, can see it through to the end. All of them. Uh, it's not like okay. if yeah. you're eliminated first, you're gone and you're going to leave and then start a new game. You're always going to get back in and keep playing. Yet, it will be more difficult to come and spawn in and keep playing. And maybe that's where it's going to be more collaborative where uh, people who are winning will let you into their fort, but you're not going to be that strong. Yeah. You're just going to have secondhand weapons and go from there Maybe, maybe they're going to be in suits. Maybe that will be the reason some people would be more collaborative is if you come back at that point why not make them spawn back and they're part of the invasion and it's just late game so then all of a sudden you can have them with limited action so they can be a trash mob they can be a lieutenant that's true but i don't think that's fun for everybody everyone's gonna want yeah no it's not like people are gonna have a preference whether to be a trash mob go kill other people or be an actual that's true it's like a left or dead uh, situation um yep 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 or evolved situation, it. but or Friday the third. Anyway, <laughs> the list goes on. <laughs> uh, I I think the incentive of staying in the game is maybe from then you just want to help bring down the giant creatures, and then you'll get points for that, and then experience. And maybe we'll have like a Overwatch system where if you stay the whole game, you get bonus experience for just staying, you know, for not yeah. leaving, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, that'll be good. All right. Mm, so i think we have a full game here alex what do you think would this be a game you would want to play and is it fun tower defense battle royale no with alien invasions kaijus suits different stuff added in making it fantastical with other really cool guns yes dude i i call bullshit I call bullshit on that you would not play this game i think you'd think it's I w- fun so <laughs> I, I think it, so Jay's right. I would probably get in. I'd get killed a lot. I'd lag a bit and be like, I'm out. It it will be a spell break situation for you. We're like, this is fun. I enjoy this, but I don't want to play it. <laughs> it's because my internet's so bad. That's the only reason. <laughs> How about you? Oh, what, dude. Would you like this game? Yeah, no, I think I would love it. I th- I think it's, I think this is what... I don't know because I didn't play Save the World, but I feel like this is kind of what Fortnite tried to do with Save the World. Um, oh yeah, which is once upon yeah, a time, which is what Fortnite it was, was just a PVE game, and it only leaned into it because of the other battle royale exactly. game that people loved. Um, but, well, anyway, it's a long yeah. right, but I think okay, if you yeah, do I this right, and these like these these giant epic battles feel giant and epic, kind of like how Star Wars d- Battlefront does it, where you take down this AT AT, and you're just like hell yeah. But um, yeah, I think it'll be really cool, especially if yeah we do spawn in like battle jets and these like mechs that fly, and then all of a sudden you're playing Anthem f- all all of a sudden and stuff like. like I think it could yeah. end up being a really and- really cool game. Like, if I had a dedicated squad, I would dress up like a Power Ranger and be ready where I'm like, when we, if we need to abandon our fort to get the mech where we get to collaborate, we're doing it. Yeah. And I mean, that's the pull of a uh, uh, Battle Royale game where there's a supply drop just 10 feet or 10 meters from you and you already have a great foundation. The argument is, do I want to risk it, run to that supply drop that everyone can see, or do I stay here fortified and be able to pick off whoever goes to that supply drop? So, I mean... Baby, we're going to be Voltron. Let's go. (laughs) And we'll obviously have, like, cosmetics and skins that obviously allude to Power Rangers and stuff like that. And I think think this will be really fun. Now that we have a complete game, what game studio would you assign to be able to make? When the creatures so, attack? Is that what I said? Yeah, when the creatures attack. Now, a game studio, huh? A game studio. A game studio. So help me out here. Mm-hmm. What, who in Bethesda makes Doom? Oh, I have it. 
I have it. It's it's like two it's letters. It's not arcane. Like, it's like IP. Id. Id, Id software. Thank you. So I I know this is ambitious, but imagine Bethesda with that Microsoft money. Id makes a game Dude, that's I a battle totally royale. I totally forgot Microsoft bought Bethesda. Holy shit. That's so crazy. So, yeah. Now imagine, imagine they just pump money into it and they're like, look, the Doom gameplay is already good. Take that and then extrapolate it into a battle royale where there's demons coming from hell anyway. So. What about that, Jay? What do you think? I know, what do you think? I know you said id, but before yeah. you said id, you said someone else. And what the... I like it. I think Doom's cool. They have their own multiplayer stuff, so obviously they can do this. But yeah, they can. But I think Arcane could do it better than it. Uh I haven't seen them do anything. Is Ar- now I'm getting confused here. Arcane's only done single player games. They've done Dishonored. Yes, um, but what? but they also they- did Prey, and Prey had oh, a I didn't bunch of cool ass multiplayer DLC. Kind of like what they did with Ghost of Tsushima where they just added DLC that's multiplayer uh randomly. Yeah, yeah. Arcane did the same thing with Prey, and I didn't play any of them, but they did some crazy cool stuff where you could play as a mimic and you could hide and then you have to like it's like Gary's mom. Oh, I do remember yeah. that. Yeah, so you you hide basically in the room as an object and wait for the player. And that's a lot of fun. Exactly. And it, they did cool multiplayer collaborative stuff like that. So I think Arcane could do something interesting with this. Um, but yeah, but id, Arcane, Bethesda, just in general, I think they would do really cool stuff. Um, much different than what we're explaining. It's not going to be super, like, in my head, this looks like Overwatch. It's a little bit more anime-esque. But like, kind of like Fortnite, maybe. But if it or Bethesda takes it over, it's gonna look a lot different. Great, Much different. But, but I also different. didn't. Yeah, I I just did. I wanted to do a studio that would benefit from a battle royale, but doesn't necessarily have one in that the real house. That being I mean, said, there is a company that has been trying so hard oh, to break into either the battle yeah. royale or just a hero shooter, just just anything. They're just trying to break in. Mm-hmm. Ubisoft. Mm-hmm. Ubi- I-, I thought you were going to go with uh, Randy Pitchford for a second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I-, I wasn't going to go with him because I think his games are fine <laughs> where they're at, about Borderlands. I- <laughs> but <laughs> they, they, <laughs> yeah. No, they've definitely been trying as well. Uh, Gearbox, definitely. Yeah. I mean, Gearbox, yeah. Godfall was out there. Uh, and there no Anthem's EA. Um, they did something else. Battleborn, is that Gearbox? Yeah, that's yeah, what they did. Um, yeah, Battleborn did was uh, Gearbox. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean Gearbox. Sure, uh, I prefer Ubisoft a little bit more just because so they're I. more my wheelhouse of games. Um, Same, but yeah, either of those dudes, you know, not dudes. You know what I mean? Those gigantic mega corporations. <laughs> hey, you know what? In in the court of law, they're handled as dudes, so you're fine. And with that. 137th IP has gone gold. We hope you look forward to this experience that will probably never release. You could This one might. <laughs> I hope so. As I do with most of our games, most of our games. You can write to at foundgames at gmail.com if you have anything to passion to the game we created today. Also, give us feedback. We are still learning how to make the show better and your feedback really helps. We have a Patreon. If you like to back our ideas, please head over to patreon.com slash we are not game devs. Patrons receive episodes two days early and an extra podcast at the beginning, which caught the tail end of our conversation at the beginning of this episode. That's patreon.com slash we are not game devs. If you enjoyed our show, why not subscribe and give us all the stars on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Store, Spotify, YouTube, and more. And if they ask for a review, instead of reviewing our show, become your inner game critic and review when the creatures, when the creatures attack, attack the video game we just created. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next Friday with another new IP. Again, my name is J.E. And I'm A.G. Thank you. And please remember that we are not game devs. So this game has Doom combined with Ready Player One, combined with Voltron, combined with Gundam, combined with, um, what is it? Uh, oh, that game when the aliens attack by Activision. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Is that destroy all humans? Destroy all humans. Like it's like a mishmash. I mean, 
what is We Are Not Game Devs? If not, we're just taking things from every single video game that we love and just mashing it all together into something that... And we're like, you guys need to do this. Exactly. Someone do these ideas, please. And then, you know, just mention us. 